Mr. Teru, in this video we are going to do one last example uh, where we're going to do an integration problem that requires trigonometric substitution. We're going to find the indefinite integral of x times the arc cosine of x dx. And this should satisfy some viewers uh, that complained that one of my previous uh, videos uh, were, was mislabeled. Uh, it, I did have it called integrating inverse trig functions, but all the answers were inverse trig functions. So I changed the name to integration that involves inverse trig functions. And now finally we have a, an inverse trig function in our integrand. And how are we going to tackle that? I did say this was going to be our last example that involved trigonometric substitution. And when I look at this expression, I don't see, um, you know, any square root of a sum or difference of squares. This certainly does not look like any of these other examples we've worked on so far uh, where we're doing integration involving trig substitution. Hmm. Well, our integrand has two, um, the product of, you know, well, it has two factors. It's the product of x and the arc cosine of x. And which is okay, you know, maybe we have some kind of u prime and u situation here and that just isn't going to work. No, what we're going to have to do uh, to work out this integration problem is remember a few formulas and a few facts. Well, we're going to have to remember that the derivative of arc cosine of u, which is very similar to the derivative of arc sine of u, except there's a sign change, we have negative u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. We're going to use integration by parts to work out this problem where we recognize those two factors that are in our integrand and we're going to look for the factor, uh, the most complicated factor that's, that's, uh, that we can integrate using a basic integration formula and another factor when we take the derivative of it we get something that's simpler. And so the indefinite integral of u dv is equal to uv times minus the indefinite integral of v du. And then somewhere along this, uh, this problem, we're going to require uh, one of these power reducing functions uh, that we see here. We don't use, you know, we hadn't used these very much up until pretty recently in calculus. So I'm um, not sure if your teacher can require you to memorize these or you have to, uh, or they'll, you know, give you this as a reference. But uh, we're going to have it here as we go through our problem. And we've got the indefinite integral of, you know, x arc cosine of x dx. Uh, what is the simplest, uh, well, what's the most complicated factor that we can easily integrate? Certainly, we've never integrated inverse trig function before, so this is not going to be our, our dv in the uh, integrand. So we're going to let uh, dv be x. So we have dv is equal to x dx, and then we're going to integrate both sides of this equation. And we're going to get v is equal to bringing this power up by 1 and then dividing. We have 1 half x squared. So v is going to be equal to 1 half x squared. Now the factor, of course, uh, the, you know, what do we have left? What's the factor that when we take the derivative of, we get something supposedly uh, simpler? We're going to let um, u equal arc cosine of x and then du is going to be equal to now the function, if you will, inside my inverse trig function is just x. So really, um, I'm just writing this in terms of uh, with our u here for u substitution because most of the time we don't have just a simple x inside of any other function for that matter. And we're always using that chain rule. But we're going to have the derivative, uh, the negative derivative of x, which of course is negative 1, over the square root of 1 minus that u squared. So it's going to be 1 minus x squared dx. Awesome. So now that we have our v, our u, and our du, we're going to rewrite this as following the integration by parts. That's going to be u times v. So u times v, we have 1 half x squared times arc cosine of x minus the indefinite integral of v du. So, of v du. Ah, okay, so this is starting to look more like our other problems where our integrand has a sum or difference of squares in it. We're going to go ahead and we're going to move that 
one that negative out front, move the one half out front and uh, rewrite it. You know, of course, this is x squared over one, so we're going to have one half x squared arc cosine of x plus one half times the indefinite integral of x squared over the square root of one minus x squared dx. Awesome. And I pointed this out in all my other examples if you've been watching my videos in sequence. If not, uh, you know, why can't we just let the inside of this be u? And if that's, you know, let u be 1 minus x squared, well then du is going to be negative 2x. And I can take care of the negative 2, just introduce a multiplication of uh, negative 2 and a division of negative 2. But if we have a degree of 2 here, not a degree of 1. So uh, that is not going to work. And that means we're going to require um, some trigonometric substitution. And that means setting up a little right triangle, filling in the sides, and all kinds of good stuff. So, we are going to recognize that we have a difference of squares. So this is going to represent the side, one side, of a right triangle. Now, if that is going to represent, if the square root of 1 minus x squared is one side of a right triangle, well then a is going to be equal to 1, because that's really a squared, and our u, uh, staying consistent with our notation of course in our notes, uh, is going to be x. And now when we place those values of 1 and x around the triangle, we want to set up a, a trig function, a primary trig function on theta, so that we get the constant in the denominator. Now, that means I want to set up a sine, tangent, or secant of theta. I don't want to use, for my initial uh, work here, setting up the trig function with theta, I don't want to use a co-function like cosine, cotangent, or cosecant. So, let's see here. This is a leg. Uh, that means that the 1 is going to represent, it's 1 minus another answer, so that means the 1 has to be the hypotenuse. And does the x go here, or does the x go here? Well, if I put the x here, the cosine of theta is x over 1. I don't want a co-function, I want to use a primary function, so the x goes here. And here we have the square root of 1 minus x squared. We've got our little right triangle set up. So we have the sine of theta is equal to x over 1. So just basically x, which means dx, the derivative of sine is cosine, so dx is going to be the cosine of theta dx. Great, so we have some trig substitution that's going to get rid of our x or replace our x. We're going to replace our dx with cosine of, whoops, cosine of theta d theta. Try that again. And then we need another substitution to get rid of the radical. Okay, well that means that from here we have the cosine, again, and I want the constant in the denominator. So the cosine of theta is equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared over 1. And of course that's just, the you know, hypotenuse, our radius is 1. So we have the square root of 1 minus x squared is equal to cosine. So we are looking at 1 half x squared arc cosine of x plus one half times the indefinite integral x squared which is going to be sine squared theta over um, one mi the square root of one minus uh, x squared is going to be equal to cosine and then our dx is equal to yeah cosine of theta I'm going to go ahead and put that over 1 so we see the numerators and the denominators line up. d theta. All right. Let me just make sure I'm not writing something, did something completely crazy here. Okay. Now, we, of course, we have some common factors that are going to cancel. And we get 1 half x squared arc cosine of x plus 1 half the indefinite integral of sine squared theta d theta. Now, inside our power of 2, we have a cosine function. So we're going to let u be the cosine of theta, then du is equal to the... Uh, try it again. We're going to let u be the sine of theta, then du be the cosine of theta, but I don't have a, a factor of cosine anywhere. No, this is where the power reducing formulas are going to come in, and we're going to write 1 half x squared arc 
cosine of x plus 1 half times the indefinite integral of 1 minus cosine of 2 theta over 2 d theta. Okay, great. But I want these fact I want these I want to make this individual terms. So we're going to do 1 half mm, yes. 1 half minus cosine of 2 theta over 2. Okay. Great. We can integrate 1 half with respect to theta very, very simply. Uh, and we're not going to have much of a problem here either, but uh, except that we have a function of 2 theta inside cosine. So if I let u be my 2 theta, then du is going to be 2. So I need a factor of 2 out here to complete the chain rule. And I'm going to do I'm going to introduce a factor of 2 and I'm going to, or multiplication of 2, and I'm going to balance that multiplication of 2 with a division of 2. And now we're almost done with this problem. We're going to have 1 half x squared arc cosine of x plus 1 half times, and integrating 1 half with respect to theta is going to be 1 half theta. And then we've got, again, now we have our chain rule, right? We've got uh, set uh, finish. We've got the cosine of 2 theta. Let u be 2 theta. There's my u prime. So the, um, you know, integrating cosine. Well, that's going to be sine, right? Because the derivative of sine is just cosine. So we have, oh, and we also have the 2 times 2 here, right? So we've got minus 1 fourth sine of 2 theta. Now, we're doing indefinite integration, so don't forget your constant of integration. Now, we're going to, uh, we're going to have, uh, we're going to recognize that our expression here now has a single theta and a double theta. And I want to remove all the references of theta and get my problem back in terms of x, the original variable. But I don't have any work over here in terms of 2 theta, so we're going to use the double angle identity here. and try not to run out of room. And I want to make sure I'm not running out on time. Okay. I'm using an SLR, so I have to record in like 20 minute sections. Uh, we're going to have the two cancel with that four, given us a, a divisor of two. And we need to distribute that one half, or we can do that later, I'm gonna do it right now. Now, let's get rid of all of our references of theta. Oh, wait a minute. I don't have an equation yet that is going to, you know, tell me what theta is. Like, I don't have a replacement for theta. So that's going to come in here, and we're going to say that theta is equal to the inverse sine. Well, I was going to write inverse, but we'll do arc sine since I've been using the arc notation uh, through the problem. So we have theta is equal to in arc inverse sine of x or arc sine of x. Uh, one half x squared arc cosine, forgetting my c there, plus one fourth arc sine of x minus one fourth. Now the sine of theta is just simply equal to x over one. The cosine of theta ah, is just simply equal to the square root of 1 minus x squared, again over 1. I'm just in the habit of, once things start looking like fractions, always write them in fractions, make sure the numerator and denominator line up. Plus c, and um, you know, that's it, other than maybe I don't need to really write this as a fraction, and just say negative 1 fourth x times the square root of 1 minus x squared, and just because I check everything I do, especially when I'm trying to talk and teach and all that good stuff at the same time, let's make sure I don't, and, and sometimes think, uh, make a silly mistake, made a silly, mis silly mistake. Nope, that is it. That is how you um, are going to finish this problem. Uh, that's going to uh, be how you sometimes, I mean, who knows how complex these are going to get, right, later on in calculus, but at least for this example, we have integrated uh, an inverse trig function. I missed a true, bam, go to your homework.